Okay, so I'm gonna go over how uh, I prefer to use soft tissue guides. So if you've ever used a soft tissue guide, you know that generally they are considered to be a flapless uh, surgical solution, which I don't really love. You know, most people don't have the keratinized gingiva to spare for you to take a five millimeter chunk out of that. Plus I like to see the bone. That's just kind of where my comfort level is with my training. And so I've, I've kind of come up with this alternative method of how to use a soft tissue guide that allows you to uh, still have a flap, but accurately keep your guide positioned. Uh, so I'll show after this little demo how I actually make this, but here's our soft tissue supported guide. This was made with a, a, a dual scan and just using the scan appliance guide function in Blue Sky Plan. Uh, the unique thing about this is that it has this removable tooth section. And so the reason that's nice is because if you've got a really good ridge form, you can actually uh, very accurately seat this in the mouth. So this case, you know, we've got, uh, you know, the gingiva superimposed on top of a maxilla. So the guide would go in and you would get that fully seated. And then you would go ahead and you can have the patient bite down. So by them being able to bite down on the denture, that keeps it very accurately seated all the way around. And you're not relying on just holding it in there with a finger uh, to stabilize this for drilling your pinholes. So with that done, now you could go ahead and drill your pinholes. Now I've already drilled these, so I'm not gonna sit here and do all these, but basically you would hub this out. And once you've drilled all four pinholes and inserted the pins, so we'll place all four pins into place. All right, and then once that's done, you can have the patient open up and this tooth section can just be removed. Now, the reason I like to do this is because now I can go in and actually take, uh, if, if this were actually in the mouth, what I would suggest using is one of those indelible ink sticks that you would mark like a denture sore spot. But now you can actually go in and you can just mark the site of each implant. I'm just doing it with a pencil here. And then with that done, now go ahead and remove the guide completely. Okay, so the result is that I can exactly see now where my implants all go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And at this point, I would design my incision to basically go in the attached gingiva just lingual to each of those sites. So you can kind of see this outline right here. I would make this incision and then somewhere back behind this, go ahead and release it, right? And then you could go ahead and flap that, okay? So I'm gonna remove all of the soft tissue. Which leaves me this. Now at this point, the guide can go back on and you're ready to start doing your guided surgery. So this is what's nice about this is now we've got a flap. We could uh, inspect the bone. We can remove this at will and check out where we're at. For positioning it, you know, usually once you start flapping, you've lost your accuracy of a soft tissue guide. But in this scenario, you've still got all of the saddle area, all of the palate that is still tissue supported. But when you go in and insert the pins again, and it takes a little bit of effort just to line those up. Once you get one or two in, then it goes really easily. Now, where you've lost the tissue support on the buckle, you're still gonna be supported uh, by these pins so that this stays in place. And now you're ready to go ahead and do your osteotomies uh, in, the, uh, in the maxilla. So you could do your osteotomies, place your implants fully guided, and then at that point, you're ready to either immediate load or to bury this. And because you've not created those massive holes in the gingiva, you could actually just take your buckle flap and get primary closure back over this if you do want to two-stage this. So uh, I'll show you now in the software how we go about making this. Okay, so before we jump to the software, let's just look at a clinical case. This is a different case, but it was conducted the same way. This was done on a lower arch. So here's the patient. Uh, she had some existing dentures, which she really liked. So uh, no need to reinvent the wheel. We just used those dentures, placed radiographic markers, did a comb beam scan with her wearing those dentures in full occlusion, and then comb beam scanned each of the dentures with the markers by themselves. And then that's taken into the blue sky plan and merged. And when you get it into blue sky, what you'll notice is that the dentures are very radiolucent. So you won't see those at all, but you will see these radiographic markers. 
and then when you bring in the DICOMs of the denture alone scan that's going to pull everything into uh, the software so here you can see the upper and the lower dentures in place now I did bone segmentation on this as well but that was purely for uh, just for presentation purposes you don't need to do that on a soft tissue supported guide case uh, it adds a lot of time and it's really not necessary but you can see here the stitch of everything one of the ways that you can verify that everything is accurately stitched is that you should be looking for in any airspace you should see this where your model outline corresponds to that black line where it transitions from the denture to the air and then secondly you should also see that your model outline follows the radiographic marker you can see that rounding around that radiographic marker so this is a good stitch everything's in place uh, here you can see the same thing on the lower again matching up with the soft tissue transition to air and so we're going to show the lower case here this is the six implant positions that were planned uh, this is going to uh, be for just a mandibular hybrid so we've got 16 millimeters of prosthetic space uh, everything in the posterior is emerging through occlusal tables everything in the anterior is coming lingual to the incisal edges and then of course we've got the pins strategically placed in between those and so when you place your pins you want to be mindful not to angle those things down because remember you've got to come in from from the opening of their mouth and drill these so if you get those flat or if you angle them downward, you're just not going to be able to get the angle to pin this in place. And so here was the resulting soft tissue supported guide. You can see that uh, basically the software just duplicates that exact same denture, but it builds in the guide tubes for uh, that particular guided system. And so it should fit the exact same way as what uh, the denture did in the mouth. You can see we've got pin tubes and all of that. And then the part I'll show in the software here in a moment is uh, creating the removable tooth sections. This is going to allow you to put both of these in the mouth and they can bite down into full occlusion. And that really helps you a lot when you're drilling those pinholes. It, it frees up some slack in their lips and cheeks where you can pull those out of the way and get access to drill your pinholes. It's just a really nice uh, addition to how we can do these cases. So I printed some models just to demo the case. Uh, here's the jaw models. Here's everything pinned into place. And then once you remove the tooth section, this is what it would look like when you're ready to do surgery. And this was done using the Blue Sky Bio fully guided kit. These are keyless drills, so access is going to be a lot easier in the mouth. You don't have to have these external keys or spoons to uh, stabilize while you're doing your drilling. It's just a really simple protocol. So here we are in the mouth. Uh, this surgery was done by Dr. Aaron Carmine, uh, so I had gone over to his office and kind of worked with him on this case. So we put the denture in place. This was all done under local anesthesia, um, and with the, the dentures in place, now she bites down. Everything is fully seated. We'll go ahead and drill the pinholes, and so you'll use a little irrigation as you're doing this, and just go slow and easy. You're, you're kind of going a slow pecking motion, going two millimeters maybe at a time and then get all the way out and let some water get down into the to the irrigation hole so that you can keep things cool that's one of the reasons I see people um, have trouble with guided surgery is that you know you've got this guide and if you wanted to you could just go all in one shot and make your osteotomy but if you do that you're gonna potentially overheat the bone so the pinholes were made and now with the pins in place he went ahead and removed the tooth section and with that out of the way, started with an indelible ink stick and just marked through each implant osteotomy site and created a purple dot on the tissue. And then the guide can be removed completely. All right, so your pinholes are made flapless, right? That's gonna be down in the mucosa though and it'll be a really small hole. But now that I can see where the implants belong, we'll make an incision line along this yellow line. So we're just lingual to the implant sites and then do a release back towards the, uh, the posterior. And so he's doing this reflection of the flap, this is a full thickness flap. Again, lingual tissue and the retromolar pads are being left in place. Just the buckle flap is being laid. And we try to reflect down until you can see the mental foramen. You know, you've at least got to reflect down below your pinholes. Otherwise, you're not going to get the uh, the guide seated and the pins reinserted so at least go down below your pinholes but that's also a reason to be strategic in how you place your pins 
uh, unless you're doing a bunch of bone reduction, there's no value in going really deep with your pins. Keep them as high as possible. And now the guide has been reinserted, so it's, it's orienting itself on tissue on the lingual and as well on the retromolar pad. But to hold the buckle position, he just had to find the pinholes again. And again, once you get one or two of those inserted, it becomes really easy to insert the rest of them. So now we're going ahead and making the osteotomies. This is the uh, Blue Sky Fully Guided Keyless Kit. So there's a bone profiler first, used in all six sites. And then we start with the two by six and we start working our way up to the final drill diameters. Uh, we did take a check film right over the mental foramen just to make sure that everything was clear, looked good. And now that the osteotomies are all made, uh, he's placing six Biomax implants in each, uh, in each position. And so with the guided driver, you can crank this thing down with the ratchet until your stop bottoms out on the top of the guide here. And once it does bottom out, you've got to quit cranking because if you don't, now the guide can't move. So you're just turning your, your implant into an auger and you're going to lose your primary stability. And as you can see here, we got really good torque on everything. They all torqued out between 40 and 60, which to me is the sweet spot, especially if you want to immediate load. Um, <clears throat> If you're not going to immediate load, then uh, you know I don't worry that much about primary stability, honestly. Uh, here you can see torque in another. And then this is the money shot. This is where you can see all six implants in place. And uh, we were not going to immediate load on this one. We were just placing cover screws and then going to bury this. And because we're going to bury it, that's a really nice feature to having that intact flap because we can just pull all that together and fully close this. And so again, this was Aaron's first uh, full arch surgery. And, you know, two hours, that's pretty good. Uh, for a first surgery, we went really slow and easy. Uh, it was pretty stress-free. And so this is a really cool way of doing this that's probably less traumatic than uh, some of the bone-supported guides. The determination for me of whether or not this is a good option is how much bone reduction needs to be done. If it's less than about four millimeters, then just use this. This is cheap, it's easy to make, uh, it's simple, it's less aggressive surgery. Uh, but once you start needing to get five or more millimeters of bone reduction, well, now you're going to have to drill so deep that you can lose some accuracy and you get a lot of wag factor with your drill. And so that would be the determination of when I would use this as opposed to, you know, either a bone reduction guide or a stackable guide system, one of those type things. So let's jump now to the, well, actually, there's one more slide here. I wanted to show this. This is how accurate it is. So this is the pre-op plan position and we took a post-op cone beam. You can see all the implants are matched up exactly to where we planned it. But this is the real uh, story right here. The post-op CT has the implants in green here. That was re-imported into the uh, planning case. And so you can see that those green implants are exactly superimposed where the planned implant positions were. So this is a real kind of proof of concept that this is an accurate system to use. Okay, and again, these are, you know, they're going to look swollen because, you know, in a cone beam, metal just shows up uh, kind of rough and you get some scatter around it. But you can see it's exactly superimposed over where those planned implant positions were. So now let's jump into the software and I'll show you how I make this. All right, so here's that case that I had just shown um, on the uh, model work. And you can see this is my tooth uh, section that's removable. Here is the soft tissue supported guide. And then you see the uh, maxillary model that I created. But let's kind of start from ground zero and just create this thing from the ground up. Uh, you don't necessarily need the maxilla here. Um, what you do need is the denture model, okay? So this is really all that you need, okay? Now this would have come from your dual scan technique where you scan the patient wearing it with the radiographic markers. You can see composite blebs were placed to use as radiographic markers since he didn't have any on hand. And I've planned the implants, and here you can see where those implants are as well as the pin positioning. So it was kind of difficult to get a pin in the back because these implants are exactly three millimeters apart. Uh, but you can see we did get it squeezed right between those implants. We've got a couple in the anterior. The bone up here in the anterior was so skinny that we really couldn't get an implant in there. And then in the posterior, we've got some wider implants. So this is ultimately going to be for a bar overdenture. And again, notice my pin placement. It's coming in from down below and angling upwards. 
Uh, so that's going to make it a lot easier to get these in place and to get them drilled in the first place. So at this point what we need to do is uh, turn on our guide tubes. All right, so here are the guide tubes. And one of the things I'll check for is to make sure that I don't have uh, any significant amounts of the guide tube sticking through the bottom. Uh, if you do, like I do in this case, then it's probably wise to go ahead and raise the offset and move that tube out because for whatever reason in Blue Sky Plan, when you make this guide, it's going to include that on a soft tissue guide. Uh, if you just made a standard guide on the soft tissue, it wouldn't it wouldn't build in this excess tube sticking through the bottom. So you can deal with this one of two ways. You can either just create this as is, or you can change the offset. Now this is pretty evident where it's sticking through. So I, I would be comfortable, honestly, with this, just making the guide and then grinding that out after the fact uh, so that it doesn't you know, create a prematurity where this won't fully seat on the tissue. Uh, but that's user preference. Just know if you're using the Blue Sky Fully Guided Kit, uh, the standard offset is 8.5 millimeters, so for every millimeter you raise your guide tube offset, you'll have to use that much more drilling depth. So, for example, if I was using uh, an 11.5 millimeter implant right here, and my offset was 8.5, but I wanted to raise this tube, then if I raise the tube offset 1.5 millimeters, now I've got to add 1.5 millimeters to my drilling depth. So I would actually need to use the 13 millimeter drill. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I've got other videos on that topic. But the way you make this guide, it's incredibly easy. So all you have to do is go over here to the guide panel, make sure all of your tubes are turned on. And we're just going to hit Create Scan Appliance Guide and make sure in this drop down menu you've got that denture model selected. And so we're going to Create Scan Appliance Guide and it's just going to build these guide tubes into this denture. And otherwise, it'll be pretty much a duplicate denture. Okay, so here you see the guide has uh, been completed. Now when you go to your surfaces panel, you'll see it show up as scan appliance guide. So let's turn off the original green denture and take a look at this. And you can see there's my guide, okay? Now you will have some little excess areas like this. And so I'm gonna hide all these implants and I usually will just go back and cut these out. So let's select this and in the surfaces panel, I'm gonna choose cut and I'm just gonna go over the top of these and cut them out. And we'll get the ones on the other side. Actually, that side doesn't look too bad, but I will probably cut off this big anterior section Okay, and now you see we, we've got this as our guide. So this is ultimately your soft tissue guide. Let's go ahead and export this and save it so that we can utilize that in uh, our printing. So I'm gonna just export this to, let's just go to my downloads. Okay, so that's exported. now. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and export the original denture. So let's go to File, Export Data. And this one I will call Original Denture. There we go. And one thing that I'm going to need to do to create that tooth section is I need to make a path of draw model on this guide because I've got to subtract that from the original denture so that I can make that tooth section where it just drops into this. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest way to make a path of draw model on something is to go to the denture module. And once you're in the denture model module, we're gonna trick the software into thinking that we're making a denture. Now we're really not, but the first step in making a denture is to create a path of draw model. So we're just kind of hacking this module to do that one thing and then we'll be done with it. 
So in order to start that process, you're going to have to have at least two teeth in there. So I'm going to just choose two teeth here and just drop them anywhere. It doesn't matter where. That's good enough because now you'll see this opens up. So let's tell it we want to make a denture on this red soft tissue supported guide. It's going to be a maxillary denture and let's say create denture. So the first thing here it asks is indicate a path of draw. So I'm going to just look down the barrel of these implants and say set my insertion direction from the view. I'm going to not allow any undercuts and then I'll push next. <coughs> And here you see what's happened. We've now got a path of draw model. We don't need these teeth. So at this point, we're done. Let's go ahead and export this. File, export data. POD for path of draw. We'll save that. Now this is the one step where I've got to jump outside of Blue Sky because I need to create an offset on this. If I just directly subtract this from the original denture, the parts are not going to fit. They don't have any tolerance between them. And as, as accurate as printing is, it's, it's just not going to seat it unless you do that. So we're going to go into Mesh Mixer. I'm going to open up my downloads and open this uh, original denture file up. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and import also the other two models, the soft tissue guide and the soft tissue guide path of draw. All right, now we have everything in here. So notice again, you've got your path of draw model, you've got your original guide, and you can actually see that path of draw indicated over this. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just using this soft tissue path of draw model, we're going to offset this. What I'm going to do is say select all and now go up to edit, offset, and I want to offset this by probably 0.2 to 0.25. Okay. You see that it has now offset this by 0.25. Now it's going to default the offsetting distance to whatever you last used at this tool. So let's say if this had, you know, offset this by one millimeter, you would need to change this to 0.25 or whatever offset distance you wanted and let it refigure. But since this is correct, this is what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and accept it. And then very important, you can see here, the original surface is still under here. Do you see that one? And then all this new surface has been offset by 0.25. While this is still selected, I need to hit Y on the keyboard and that separates the selected portion that I've offset into its own STL model. Okay, so again, see the original up here? I'm gonna turn that off. Okay. So this now just needs to be subtracted from the original denture. And you can see when I do that, all of this internal portion is going to get removed and it's going to leave me behind this little section right here. So to do that, we're going to select the denture first, right? So when you do these Boolean difference functions, select the object you want to subtract from and now hold control and select the object you want to subtract and say Boolean difference. And there you have it. We'll accept that. And now when I turn on the original soft tissue supported guide, you can see what we've got. So this is going to fit great. Again, you see these little areas that will need to be adjusted out. Uh, but this is now going to fit very intimately and then it can just be removed on and off like that. So you just print both these parts and then you're ready to do this. So a much, much faster method for making the guides than, you know, a traditional bone supported guide. So I hope you found that useful. If you're interested in learning some of this stuff, then I do have a, a comprehensive guided surgery course coming up in uh, October 14th and 15th of 2022 at my farm in Suwannee, Tennessee. 
would love to have you. That one's going to assume you know nothing about guided surgery and take you all the way from your basic onesie twosie guides, how to treatment plan, uh, how to design and print those guides in the house, all the way up to the soft tissue supported guides like this one. Uh, so if you've not really done a lot with guided surgery and you want to learn to master that yourself, then this is the course I would suggest starting with. And I hope to see you there. Thanks.